Good Happy morning. How are you? Good morning, and thank you for that introduction. And yeah, we're we're proud to have served. What did we decide? A uh, five hundred and twenty-three uh, folks this this past year. You get With, the record in yeah. New Mexico for sure. Um, I mean, we're just we're just blessed, Tracy. We are, and. You know, it's it's hard. Like we talked about last week, it's hard to talk about ourselves it because is. really, it's all about those clients we serve. Yeah. And you know, being the top seller of properties in New Mexico is awesome. But really, it's, it's all our team. They're so good. They're so trained. They're so knowledgeable about the market and how to help people with their real estate needs. And and I can just say this from a from a I, I not a not tooting our horn, but but, but the, the standpoint that. Real estate traditionally is a solo agent that kind of does everything, right? They work for with a brokerage or something like that, but they're they're really um, they're doing everything themselves. Right. You know, we follow a little different model than that, Tracy. We have a a team. Everybody has their roles. You know, just think about the doctor's office, right? The doctor's office doesn't do paperwork, right? So we have special. The doctor doesn't do they paperwork. They don't greet the person. Right. They right. don't take the vitals. They don't follow up after the the chart. And and what that's allowed us to do to better serve our clients is we have specialists that you know know how to work with with buyers that are looking we have specialists know how to work with sellers that are that are wanting to sell we have people that specialize in marketing we have people that specialize in then actually doing you know the the phone sales and making sure that somebody's there to answer the phone if you're listing your home for sale or you have a question about real estate so um it's it served us very well. I, th I I feel it served our clients very well. If you if you read all the reviews about our team online, I think it's it's there. So um, anyway, I'm just you know. I, yeah, I, it's it's really great, and I personally I believe we have the best in the state that work on our team, dedicated, honest, high integrity, and just they know so much. They've got such depth of real estate, you know. Tigo, we know the statistics. How much an average realtor that's solo or just an did, average? Did you just say sells. statistics? Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you got got you going. Got me going um, there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know the average realtor in our market sells single digit of homes a year, sure, right? So sure. it's typically under five a year. Well, when when you're on a team and you're selling 40, 50, 60, 70, right? Our top salesperson last year, mm -hmm. I think, was in that seventy range. Um, you really know the market. You really know inventory. You know prices. You know what to look for, all the red flags, yep. how to look at a house and help a home buyer go, you might want to realize this one doesn't have updated windows. The roof hasn't been done. You might like this one a little bit better because they painted it a nice color. But the one that we just saw yeah. has new windows, new roof, new furnace, new AC. And all you have to do is paint the color you want and make it feel like you want, right? So having somebody who really has seen them and knows houses and the construction and what's important in a house besides just, oh, I really like this one, right, is pretty important having that advocate on your side. And when you're selling homes, same thing. You know, we sold over 200 houses as a team last year. We have an amazing uh, listing manager, Jamie, who helps button up every part of that transaction, right? She schedules the photos, makes sure we have top photographers, gets the floor plan, makes sure we have an amazing video tour of the home. We have a, a virtual walkthrough tour. Just, you know, schedules it all and is there for for our clients on, in addition to the the other realtor that's assigned that's helping market the property um you know it's we're we're pretty well, fortunate <laughs> well we got uh, tigo and tracy the venturi real estate team all you have to do is reach out to them directly welcome home abq.com and we are live uh, of course you can find us on parlor twitter youtube facebook and this is all about the 21st century ladies and gentlemen you can also hear a re-recording of this on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, and uh, visit their website, welcomehomeabq.com. In this edition, great opener, guys. Uh, we will talk about, is this the year to sell my house? 2021, 2020 Albuquerque real estate market data statistics. Yes. That gets uh, Tigo nice and excited. The 2020 United Van Lines Movers Study. I always like to see where people are moving, and we do see quite a little bit of people coming into the state of New Mexico. So that's kind of exciting. And the U.S. home equity is skyrocketing. And uh, 
We'll let uh, Tigo and Tracy take it away. We are live, so for those of you who want to go ahead and participate and send me your email directly, I'll give you a free 30-day membership to rockoftalk.chat. Tigo, Tracy, take it away. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, and by the way, Eddie, I, I, I got the subscription. Love it. Great content. Uh, I'll, I'll promote, promote it there a little bit. It's a uh, good, good product. So, um, can we just, can we do a, a, a little bit of a run through on some market conditions and where we are in the real estate market in Albuquerque? Um, Tracy, I've got, you know, the December data and I've got a little bit of a summary of, of what we saw in 2020. I think that's great considering we're into January. Let's let's do a quick recap. So what I want to uh, first couple couple numbers to just just throw out here. The average selling price of homes in Albuquerque for December was 299,822. 300,000. We almost hit that 300,000. 178, yeah. no. Yeah. Something and, and short. I do want to qualify the data that I'm sharing here because you're going to get numbers from the local association, you're gonna get stuff from the state association. I am focused on Metro Albuquerque. I'm not looking at, you know, what, what happens in our MLS as we get data from a lot of out, outline areas. So I don't wanna intermix like Santa Fe data with, with Albuquerque, which unfortunately does happen. And I don't wanna go into the, the, the muckety muck on that, but just the point is just understand my, my numbers are good, okay? <laughs> I totally believe you I know too, you though. do but get this so average selling price 299822 in December December last year 252502 that is a you see almost the number 19 percent increase. almost 19 percent increase however let's let's look at this that doesn't mean that that you know prices went up or home homes are selling for 18 percent more that was just for December but if we look at the the actual 12 month rolling average price. So we went from 248 in 2019 to actually 273 if you look at the 12 month rolling, right? So about uh, about 10%. 10.14. Yeah, so the, the 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 thing is is yeah, I mean December was just off the charts. I think it was the busiest December on record I'm for sure home sales in yeah. Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, and then the big story, Tracy, is a number of homes on the market. You know this. Anybody in the real estate business knows this. Anybody that's looking to buy a home right now knows this. And that is there are a it's an extremely low number of homes on the market right now. It is lowest. I, I've got records back to 2004 and I don't I don't see any time when we've had less inventory. It, you know, if we go back to 2004, five, you know, that was the other big boom time in our market. Um, they were low, but when you consider the difference in population, the difference, you know, just everything, definitely the lowest number of homes on the market in in uh, recorded history. That <laughs> recorded history that sounded interesting. That's funny because that's yeah. that's the 2000s. Yeah, the, in in our recorded history. Um, and so, yeah, tw you know, like 1,200 homes. And actually, I think as of today, I think it's close to 1,100 homes or 1,000 homes on the in market. The, in our metro area. Yeah. 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 And, and so. days, on, days on markets, you know, down. Average days on markets, 25 days. Median days on market is now like six days. Um, there so, were 1,300 sales in December. So, yeah, go ahead. That's a, that's a good, healthy amount for December, right? Yeah. And um, the the... Average selling price at two ninety nine eight twenty two Tigo. Mm -hmm. When we say that's a eighteen point seven percent increase, eighteen point seven four percent increase over December of last year. Right. Um, that doesn't mean you said it, but quickly. It doesn't mean home prices are now eighteen point seven four percent no higher. No. What it means is we have less affordable homes on the market selling. So it's making the median higher, right? Yeah. And actually, let me go to my Facebook post I put out there the other day. And by the way, if you want to just kind of get little snippets on what's going on in the real estate market in Albuquerque, I post stuff on my Facebook and also on my Twitter. It's just Tigo Venturi on both of them. I don't it's think pretty, there's any other Tigo yeah. Venturis out there. So you're going to find me. Um, but uh uh, you know, little snippets, but I, I, I put out those market stats, but then I wanted to, to share one other thing is the average price per square foot over the last year. Okay. Right. So Which is this, a much better indicator. Yeah. So January through December, 2020, 
was it, it increased uh, eight or excuse me nine point three percent. So that's price per square foot. And so what that means is that that is probably where when you know all the data gets crunched and we get numbers from the uh, the 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 national uh, statisticians that put this stuff together. I think that's where we're going to end up for for price appreciation in in 2020, somewhere around that nine percent range, which is healthy. It's oh, it's the highest we've than had we've in, ever had, right? Well, no, there was a year. Oh gosh, now you're putting me on a point. But, but I think right. I don't know like if it was seven or six. No, 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 no. It was in oh. uh, it was five or six. I don't remember. Oh five or oh six, where I think we had like a fourteen percent appreciation. And and I think and, and let's just as we're talking about stats, I'll just leave with this: is uh, that's my big concern about our real estate market right now. It isn't um, prices going down; it's prices going up too fast. And we get two, three years down the line and we've had 9%, 10%, you know, over, for a couple, three years, that is going to outpace um, other commodities. It's definitely going to outpace wages. Right. Um, you know, part of this, the, the reason home prices have been able to move up so fast, uh, not so fast, but they have moved up a lot is that the affordability, which is really funny, is still the same, right? Right. If you compare that- Or better because interest rates are so low. Right, you right. You actually afford more now at higher home prices than you could a year ago. You know, I gotta, write, I gotta run the data on this, but I bet if you looked at the same house a year ago at 4% interest and you looked at that same house today that's 10% 10, 10 more expensive, your monthly payment's gonna be identical. I bet you're right. Or lower. Close, or close lower. to identical. So the topics for today. Yes. Should this be the year that somebody sells their home, Tracy? That's the topic, huh? That that That's one of them. So should it be? Well, obviously what we always say, the first thing is, is it time for you to sell your house? Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, the the... Approach we're taking is does the market support is this the year you should sell your house right not you know if you don't need to sell your house you don't have a reason to sell your of house of course should you sell your house so let's say you need to move in the next couple of years is right. it the year that you should sell your house well what do you think I I think if if you, let's look at it from a timing the market standpoint right if you've been waiting for home prices to be high or higher, then yeah, it's a great time to sell. I mean, like just talked about, home prices up nine, ten percent versus last year. Right. Um, however, if you're just moving <laughs> to somewhere else in town, you're going to be paying, you know, nine to percent, ten percent more than you did last year. So you know, you have to balance that as part of it when you look into the whole timing issue. Now, I will say this, and we've said it before, and I'll say it again: is you know, if you're moving from a, let's say, sub uh, median price, median price is around 250 right now. If you're selling a home in a lower price point and you're moving up into a higher price point, you know, lower price homes definitely went up higher in price last year. Than higher price than homes. Than higher price homes. Ooh, right. man, so, that was tough. So from that perspective, if you're going to be a move up buyer is what we call it. Yeah. It's a great time. Yes. Right. Great time because you're going to be in a great position when you sell and you're going to be buying at a, a price point that hasn't appreciated as much and taking advantage of the interest rates and rock, you know, assuming you use a loan, locking in phenomenal interest rates and monthly payment for the next 30 yeah. years. Now, a lot of us say, I'm not going to be in my house for 30 years, but the analogy is you're going to be paying to live somewhere in most cases, unless you're moving in with mom or your ch children or a friend, right? So if you're going to have a monthly housing cost, you might as well be paying yourself instead of a landlord. So sidebar there. No, I, so, I think it's good. Why, why do you think, Tracy, what would be another reason somebody should be thinking about uh, selling this year if it's kind of been on their radar and now they're going, you know, maybe this is the year? You know, I'm I'm thinking shorter term when I answer this question. So yes, 2021, good time to be a seller for sure. But let's talk about today, okay. next week. Is right now a good time to sell? January we put a 7th, home 9th, the, yeah. We put a home on the market. Today's, 
We put a home on the market two afternoons ago, and by that night, okay, this house is on the west side, five hundred and nineteen thousand. Mm-hmm. And by that evening, they'd already had two showings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's the early January, not when you typically think of putting a five hundred thousand dollar plus house on the market, right? It's not what people typically do. But there's a lot of activity on that property, and next time we're on the radio, we'll probably be saying that house sold, right? Yeah. Um, so right now is a good time because the springtime, come March, April, May, there will be more homes on the market. We still won't have enough on the market, but there will be more homes on the market competing for your buyer. So getting it on right away before the market gets hotter, mm-hmm. I think, is advantageous to sellers right now. Um so if somebody's going to sell this year, Tracy, what do you think? I mean, what are the, like, let's say give three things that they should be thinking about if they're going to be selling their home this year. One of them would be to present it like a model home as best you can. Get our advice. Help us. Let us get you staging. Uh, somebody to give you advice if you need it on how to present your home so that you get top dollar. And then pricing your home right would be number two. Pricing your home right, even in this market, is critical. We have seen it over and over the last couple of months, Tigo, where somebody says the market's hot. I think I can get more than what, what the statistics are showing. And what we've seen most times is they end up price reducing, chasing the market downward. And then their house has been on the market for a month and buyers are like, what's wrong with this house? It's not sold. If it hasn't sold in five days, there must be something wrong with it. Yeah. So they're they're getting ahead of market appreciation. And so you want to be careful about that. And and, and it's actually not hard to do that because you can just look at the data at what homes are selling for. So, you know, well, we that, have the data. We have the data, right? right. That's what we do right. is is help you come up with that. You know how you're going to position your home by price in in the current market. Right. The other thing I would say is um, remember that your home is going to be a product now, and we need to think like a consumer. Mm-hmm. How will buyers feel coming into your home? What will attract them? What might turn them off? Whether it smells, clean windows, pets whatever it might be you know sometimes you have your beautiful paints that you've painted walls and in you know we need to make the house um more of a product well in in its presentation right presentation matters merchandising matters and the marketing matters just because somebody can go out and snap a bunch of cell phone photos of the home put it in the mls and have it sold in a few days you got to ask yourself, are you leaving money on the table if you're doing that? Right. So we're still doing the premium marketing on our homes. We're making sure it gets presented properly so that we're getting the clients the, the most money, right? Right. And I would say there's a number four in there. Okay. Um, you know, if we put your home on the market. I don't know. I lost track. Are we on three we're or on four? four? We're, we're on, on four. four. Okay. So. So the, we might get an above price, buff, above list price offer on the home when yes. we put it on the market. Yes. We need to remember as sellers that the house most ca- in most cases still needs to appraise. And so we need to temper what price somebody is offering along with the rest of the criteria of their offer. What, what type of loan? What's their closing date? How long is... You know, how long will it be to closing? Who's their lender? Because who their lender is matters, especially in this market. Um, Are there um, other things in their offer that we need to be considering, right? So not not just remembering that if we get an above price offer that it may not be the best offer because it may not appraise. Yeah, yeah. So. I have another topic. Well, I want. I just want to tell one story. So we have a a property that we just uh, rented. We remodeled it here in Rio Rancho and just put it up for rent. And it, if you're looking for a rental, you know there was a lot of demand. A lot of people looking for rentals right now. So but not not only do we have a, a shortage for homes for sale, we have a shortage for homes for rent as well. So let's give a warning to all those renters real quick and tell them what happened. Tell them the story. Yeah, I want to tell this. Way too common. 
this is very common. So the home, um, I put it on the normal services that we use to list homes for, for sale, but also in this case, it's was for rent. I put it on our MLS, ends up on Zillow and, you know, all the other places it goes. Well, somebody took our home for rent and put it on Craigslist for rent. Much cheaper. Much cheaper. You know, st stole our photos off the listing and they... Uh, put their contact put info. their contact info um, luckily uh, multiple people they were able to just google the address and find it on Zillow and called me direct and said something's not right here and the the reality is if you're looking for a rental and tell everybody you know that might be looking for a rental be extremely careful for listings you see on services like Craigslist where there's really no policing and making sure that the person that's posting it is actually the owner of the property. So what happens, and we don't know of anybody doing this for this particular rental, but in past years, we do know of people who have put down a month's deposit and the first month's rent yep. to somebody who's not the owner that you never hear from again. And that's really tragic because oftentimes when you're moving in from one rental to another, you know, money is scarce. You don't want to yep. lose two months worth of of um, of the money that you needed for housing. So be careful with uh, who you're renting from. Yeah. It, and there's great property managers in Albuquerque. Oh, yeah. If you need the name of a great property manager, you can call us or uh, Google property managers Albuquerque and call them individually. I think it comes down to the, the, the basic rule was if it looks too good, it probably is not. Right. It's probably not real. But the and next scam could be it doesn't look too good. That's true. And you, they say we'll meet you and give you keys as soon as you pay us on PayPal e or whatever. E exactly. So just be, again, tell all your friends if they're looking for rentals, be really careful. And it's um, unfortunately, like I say, there's there's very little policing on it. And the problem is when somebody does that, there's, you know, what are you going to do, especially if they're overseas somewhere? Right. So this is Tracy Antigo Venturi, Albuquerque Real Estate Talk. We've been coming to you here on the Rock of Talk for over five, uh, over seven years. Yeah. You can reach us. Our uh, real estate office is at 448-8888. And uh, we're all standing by to help you with your real estate needs for the year. If you have any specific questions or topics you'd like to see us cover on the radio, uh, let us know. Yeah. So, Tigo, my topic. Yes, please. You have time for it? Yeah, let's go. I want <laughs> so, to talk about equity. So we got we got time. Yeah. I'm I'm wanting to talk about what homeowners want in homes in 2021 that's unexpected. What are we seeing that's not usual? We know people are looking that you know, we've heard over and over for a few months the home office for kids home, you know, homeschooling, right? right. We know that. But you know there's a few things that have come up that are unexpected and one of them is swimming pools so yeah. if you talk to any swimming pool contractors in our area right if you now, can even get them on the phone if you can get them on the phone they are booked out a year or more i, I, think. I heard two years okay. from from somebody right and that's because people couldn't go to the swimming pools this summer right and they were like this is not okay and they're spending time at home and they're going okay this is the time for us to add that pool other things we saw we saw a tennis court being added you know another thing that's sort of unexpected it's not too common here and it's you know you see them occasionally in people's yards but not very often um a few other things new furniture which is not unusual, yeah. right? You know, they're they're spending more time at home. The other thing is multi-purpose rooms. So they might be taking the living room and not just making it a home office or their home school, but they might be making a gaming area or they might be making a library reading nook or they, you know, a, a family game table. We're seeing a lot more people playing family games, board games and things, yep. or online gaming together when they're in different states. Hey, I just got to give a shout out for, for Jackbox games. If you guys haven't checked out so Jackbox fun. games for, you know, playing and you can play them uh, online via Zoom. And we do that with our kids that live in Arizona and friends and family around the country. So sorry, side note, I want to, I want to ask you something. I mean, obviously I know the answer, but I want you to answer it, which is swimming pools, uh, tennis courts, uh, sport courts, you know, another version of like a tennis court. Uh, how much value or what value do those add to a home? 
It's a really hard question. I know. And that's why you asked me. Exactly. I, I, want, you, I, want, you. I want you to answer that one. You know, the statistics come out every year. How much does value does a swimming pool add? So, you know, a swimming pool is probably 40,000, 50,000 a minimum today in Albuquerque, yeah. right? We don't probably. have a lot of pool contractors. For, for an in-ground gunite pool, yeah, you're going to be. With a cover and a little slide. Yeah, and, yeah. So we're not Phoenix. We don't have a lot of pool contractors, first of all, competing for our work, right? Correct. They're all booked out, like you said, two years. Um, so how much is it going to be worth? It's going to add some value to your house, to the right person. Somebody who really wants a pool, the way you do the whole uh, scape around the pool, what all the rest of the outdoor living is, makes a difference, right? But it's not going to make it equal to what you put into it's, the pool. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one return on investment from a pure economic dollars and cents standpoint, but it will say it. Think about the yeah. family memories, the experiences, the time spent. You know, if you have family friends that enjoy it with you, you're making amazing memories. So you have to realize that that's the trade-off. Yep. And, yep. you know, what? depending on what time of year you sell your home, a pool can actually add a little bit more value if you sell it springtime or early summer or summer. Kind of it, it wanes as you get closer to cold weather. But the, the pool open with beautiful photos of it when we're marketing your house uh, is definitely going to help. We've, we've had wintertime photos of of pools where the grounds don't look very well mm -hmm. kept and the pool is covered and there's equipment laying around that's not going to help you too much but if you you know take the time to have the pool looking great if it's off season it still helps so yeah so yeah. i didn't give you an exact number tigo because i can't but that, that, there isn't th one we'll that's that that's to, uh, that's the reality there there is not one obviously it adds some. value it, it makes the home more sellable but also on the flip side of that is there's certain people that will absolutely not buy a home that has a swimming pool. So you have to take that into account too when you're going to sell. Right. We uh, don't see that too often though. Yeah. yeah. Hey, in the, in, in, in those were great. Was there anything else on that, Tracy? I'm sorry. I, I uh, You know, making maybe making your home more comfortable, changing around um, maybe colors and putting in those colors on the walls that make you happy, things that you might have not done. Yeah. Previously, but you're like, okay, we're here, we're hunkered down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it how I want it. Yeah. Let's let's hope that the hunkering uh, slows down here real soon, and yeah. and hopefully we're we're getting there. Um, home equity. I just want to hit real quick, Eddie. If we we've, we've got a couple more minutes, um, there was j j the third quarter home equity uh, numbers came out nationally, and it was a record. Um, in New uh, in New Mexico, well, nationally, um, what they're saying is over it was a Q3 19, Q3 uh, 20, uh, 17 percent or 17 thousand dollars in home equity gain, and so home equity that's you know actually money <laughs> in the bank literally or the house bank if you will. Right. Um, in New Mexico, it's actually twenty thousand. So it's actually so, higher than the national average. So what we always say, Tigo, is home ownership is for savings. Right. Right. You're you're saving your for your own future by owning a home because yep. you're paying yourself, and the home values typically go up. Yes, some years they've pulled back, but that's not the norm. If you look over a thirty or forty year chart, yep. Um, home ownership is the number one wealth builder for most Americans. And, and I've got just one quote here. I just want to I want to hit this guy's um, with uh, Realty Track, which is one of the companies that do um, kind of like foreclosure processing, if you will. Uh, oh right. Realty yeah, track. yeah, yeah. Realty Track. And 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 what he said was all this equity is one of the things, one of the things, and there's a few other that will that should prevent a huge wave of foreclosures. Once the government memoranda on and the CARES Act forbearance programs expire. And so what they're saying is we've had this huge build in equity now. This is nothing like 2008 where everybody was had squeezed the equity they could out of their home and then prices started going down. So it's, uh, it's a good thing, at least for the housing economy, um, and it looks good going into the future. So there's our start to 2021. Yes. There it is. Yep. Tico and Tracy Venturi, the Venturi Real Estate Group.
from Keller Williams Realty. You can always pick up the phone and dial my friends, the best, Tigo and Tracy Venturi, 448-8888. That's 448-8888 or welcome home abq.com that's welcomehomeabq.com thanks for checking us out live on facebook twitter